All right. And, you know, as we get started, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd love it if you'd th- just go into chat and, uh, and let me know what your mindset is, right? Where are you as you approach, you know, as we get ready uh, for this conversation, where's your mindset? And uh, feel, please feel free to put that in chat and I'll, I'll be watching it and, uh, and make sure that, you know, we meet your expectations. So, all right. I'm going to get chat out of the way here. Always looking for another arrow in the quiver. Great. Uh, curious. Well, we will satisfy your curiosity. You know, keep those coming. So, all right. Growth drive. So, for those of you who don't know me, know me, my name is George Sandman. I'm the founder and CEO of Growth Drive. And Growth Drive is where business advisors go to be great at what they do. And we have guiding principles. This is a community, all right? It's a community uh, gathered around the knowledge, the tools, and the support that it takes to lead clients to wins. And uh, we have guiding principles, right? We stay sharp. We are net givers. We prize close personal experiences. Those of you who have been through uh, trainings, our summits, et cetera, you know that we work together. We workshop more than we do what we're doing today, which is more of a chalk and talk. We are transformative, not transactional, and we strive. And this comes right out of our vision and mission. We strive to leave an indelible, positive impact with each client and with our peers. Okay, guys? And those guiding principles influence everything we do. Now, I have a book being published by Forbes. We are rocking and rolling. It is hitting It is hitting uh, bookstores on September 12th. I'm very excited. Now, in that book, which I'm thrilled and honored, honestly, to have been picked up by Forbes. In that book, we discuss a methodology and a business advisory system. And uh, so what what is in the book is actually brought to life, uh, put into your hand, made actionable uh, by what we're about to discuss. So what's Growth Drive? Growth Drive is a unified advisory system. It's a technology-enabled advisory system And we're going to talk today about clarity. Now, clarity helps with every phase of your engagement from initial conversations, from generating leads, from winning engagements, to analyzing your client's business, building strategic uh, profit and value growth plans, um, and then leading execution and tracking wins over time. And, you know, when we talk about a a unified or an end-to-end community, staying sharp, is uh, is made possible through the Growth Drive launch course and its attendant Growth Drive playbook. It's an inch thick. It's fantastic. It's a desk reference. Um, that next course is uh, being offered on August 16th, 17th, and 18th. And we also stay sharp by uh, by increasing our client facing skills. Right. So whether it's one on one skills, conversational skills, and frankly sales skills, or one to many. Uh, workshop, facilitation, leading clients forward. That's covered in our Fearless Business Advisor training. And it is a facilitation training. We just put it on here a couple of weeks ago and it got fantastic reviews. Okay, so we make it easy for you to stay sharp. Now, why are we all here? We want to help clients win, right? And what do clients know? And this comes from data that was generated by your peers, by some of you actually who are on this call and your colleagues analyzing over 50,000 middle market and pre-middle market businesses. And what did CEOs tell us they want? 62% want to grow their business. They mean growing profits. 21% want to make their business easier to run, operational freedom. And 17% are preparing to sell only to find out four out of five times that they need to increase the value of their business um, if they're going to fund their family's wealth goals. So, you know, grow profits, grow value. That's the name of the game. And in the book, we describe the three dimensions of business growth. And the three dimensions of business growth, when you harness it, first of all, imagine using this pyramid in a client meeting and your colleagues do it. Um, Your client needs to start understanding the different dimensions of growth for their business. So let's take a business. We're going to teach you how to do this. And this is what clarity empowers. Let's take a business, 1.7 million of EBITDA, two times multiple, right? Bottom end of the range of multiples are worth about 3.4. Now, 
how do we double revenues? If that CEO needs to take 20 million off the table, they're suddenly saying, oh my gosh, I'm going to be working till I'm dead because I need to increase the, the you know, my revenues sixfold. Not, not so. Let's get into this in detail. You can double revenues, but you can sex double and have a 600% impact on value because you're going to make the value of the business actionable, profit and value growth. And clarity is about making the purposeful link between growing profits and transferable value. So highly relevant to management consultants, to, uh, to CPAs, to exit planners, to investment bankers, fractional CFOs. And you have to ask yourself two questions. If that's where they need to be, how will you be relevant, right? How will you be constantly relevant, indelible? And how will you help them? Okay, and those are different questions. So what we're really going to talk about is creating a racing machine, taking what your client has and transforming it, right? Redesigning it so that it can meet one of those three, one or more of those three goals. And, and the three dimensions of business growth aren't phases. They're not silos. They're dimensions because you can move in all three at the same time. All right. Now we're here to, to show off some technology. I won't get into theory, but you are going to help your client redesign their business so that they can get the results that they want, right? We're, we're talking about driving growth, driving growth of profits and driving the growth of value. So let's jump into Clarity, all right? I'm going to click on this link here. And Clarity is online. Anywhere you have access to the internet, you have access to Clarity, all right? Um, subscribers have a dashboard. That dashboard has all of your clients and your company users. Guys, you um, you can sign up as many company users as you want. So you you become uh, you get an account and you can sign up as many subscribers as you want. Where we limit it is we limit the number of Clarity Level Twos that you can do out there. All right. Um, so. You've logged in, you're using it with your client. Now, I've pre-populated this in the interests of time. The, there are two user experiences, okay? So imagine, imagine having a URL that you can embed on your website, your outbound marketing that you can, uh, you know, you, you can share very easily out with the world. And, uh, you know, that's one user experience where the user would be doing it without you in the room. That's marketing. And that's what we call lead generator. Okay. There's another user experience, which is you sitting with a client, okay, or sitting with a client and their senior team and using Clarity Level One, this initial client interview to show your relevance, to educate your client, and hopefully to win the engagement. That's the goal here, right? How do we win the engagement? Whether it's a project or long term, Clarity will help you connect your expertise to your clients' quantified needs. So the two UXs, I'll tell you where the, when we get to the fork in the road. It starts with a survey, right? Let's start the conversation with learning more about the business. And we want you to be in a position to say to your, to your, uh, to your prospects and clients, listen, I only work with businesses where I know I can generate an ROI. I want you to be able to generate a 10 or 20 X ROI on the investment of time and treasure you make in this project. And, um, and I only work with clients where I know it's going to be worth their while. And to figure that out, you and I need to learn more about the business. So let's go. And you have clarity and you start using it. You start asking questions about the business. Um, and I'll, I'll walk through, let's walk through the first dimension so that you get a feel for how it works. There are 20, there are eight growth driving objectives in each of the three dimensions of growth. What that allows you to do is prioritize your work. Okay. The first dimension is creating predictable profits and cash flow, which, oh, by the way, gives the CEO, tends to give the CEO operational freedom, right? Makes the business far less dependent on them than it is today. All right, so what are the eight growth driving objectives for predictable profits and cash flow? Those are effect, profits and cash flow. We're going to get cash, stop cash from being trapped in the balance sheet. 
All right. They need to have an effective senior leadership team and the business needs to run smoothly in their absence. Right. So this is going straight to, uh, well, frankly, to a well-run company. We need to have an engaged workforce. If I want to have predictable profits and cash flow, we don't want turnover, turmoil, et cetera. We want everybody to be efficient. Right? We want to have an efficient operation. We want to have a maximized percentage of recurring revenue. Margins at or above the industry norm. We want, we want our client to start thinking about um, professional level, best in class level, industry best practice level, financial reporting processes. All right. Veracity of numbers, scalable sales process so that we're not at risk of our salespeople. Um, strong. And by the way, let me just scalable sales process. This is in predictable profits and cash flow. When you sit down with a client and say, I want to grow, they typically get the money hose out and they want to use it on a marketing program. Well, there are a lot of problems with that. If you start marketing like crazy and it's effective and it's generating leads, if you're not pouring them into a, into a proven sales process, then you're, you're pouring them out on the pavement. And if you run a marketing uh, campaign and it's successful and you're getting leads and your sales process works, um, you better be able to deliver on time and to spec. So strong standard operating procedures and high customer satisfaction. Eight growth driving objectives. Now, now let's put this as a narrative. Let's just take a sec. I'll slow it down. I get excited. What would this company, how would we describe this company? We'd say, hey, this, this company is really interesting. This company has a great senior leadership team. And in fact, the CEO is able to take, uh, is able to uh, be the CEO rather than the operator of the business. And the business runs smoothly uh, when, they're, when they're not around. So they have, they have a great workforce that's, that's you know, crushing it. They're hitting their numbers and they tend to stay a long time. They've got, their, their customers love them. They come back and buy from them again. In fact, they evangelize for the business. They're one of their best sources of new accounts. And they're, they're able, because of their quality, they're able to deliver, uh, they're able to charge a price that's, uh, that's above industry norms. They have, they have really strong margins. I've checked out their numbers. They look great. And, uh, and their, their sales process is really nailed down. They're delivering on time and to spec and, and their customer satisfaction numbers are off the charts. Okay. So let's think about that business. What have we just described? Who, who wants to run that business? I do, right? This is what a best in class operation looks like. All right, another eight growth driving objectives for growth where we start getting into, you'll notice that finance is in all three of the dimensions because finance, if we're just trying to have operational freedom, needs one level of complexity, right? If we're growing the business, we have to keep an eye on cash like a hawk. We have to be predicting, we have to be tracking. So we have to increase the sophistication of our financial systems. And when we gets time to go to the deal table, we need auditable numbers that are gonna that are gonna get us through due diligence. Okay. Growing the business, we need strategy, we need a strong culture, we need to get new people, we need to have a market into which to grow, right? We need to have products and services. It's best to have need, best to have products and services that are sell on value, not on price, etc. And you're gonna ask, you're gonna walk through this with your business owning client, and there's a bonus question. 24 in the three dimensions. And then, hey, what's the strength of the MA market? Guys, remember just, just six, eight months ago, the market was still really frothy. And, and people, frankly, were getting away with things in MA transactions and getting valuations, multiples that we, we haven't seen in a long time. Now there's a flight to quality. What does a flight to quality mean? Well, it means that people are looking for best in class businesses. If you're trying to you know, access the private capital markets, having a best in class operation is the name of the game. All right. Bonus question. Is the market for selling your business strong? And if it's not, that's part of the conversation. Now I'm going to make one more editorial comment here. This is not a poll. Okay. This is meant to guide a conversation. So we want to talk through these with the client. You are going to talk through them and they are, and you're going to, you're starting the process of educating your client about this business as an asset and the capacity of this business to reach their goals. That's why we talk about, that's why we measure, analyze, harness, and improve strategic capacity. Imagine you have a business that's running along at $2 million of profit today. 
And the CEO says, I want to grow to $5 million in profit over the next five years. I'm going to increase this from 2 million to 5 million. That's great. Does the business have the capacity, the ability, the chops to deliver $5 million in profits? And if it doesn't, what do we need to do to build that capacity? And that is what you're analyzing here. Sophisticated, but also very straightforward, right? I just explained it in a, in a couple of sentences. All right, so we do the survey. Now, client intake form, you probably already have this information. Throw it in. Now, this is where our UXs diverge. What I just described in the survey and in this client intake form, and that's lead generator. And what will happen is, you know, a client or a prospect completes the survey, completes this form. So where shall we send your results? They give the email address. And then you and they get a report at the same time. And that's it. You don't have a dashboard. There's no, no, nowhere further you can go. But you know what you have. You have a white hot lead for which you know some pretty cool information, right? You have some pretty cool information, some powerful, actionable information. And it will that the report that they get, um, I'll, I'll, I'll tease out what's in that report. We're just going to keep the train moving down the track here. Gather some business information. Now, if you use lead generator, you want to upsell them, right? Hey, let's see what, the, what this really means to your, the value of your business, et cetera. We're going to get their name, industry, gross revenue, net profit. You guys, you'll notice there's only one asterisk here. It's the industry. All the rest of these are optional. Uh, so they're not included in lead generator, but they are in the initial client interview. And then the system automatically generates a report. What do we know? What do we know after just a few minutes after asking our client, walking through with our client, discussing 25 questions? What do we know? Well, we know their strategic capacity. The strategic capacity of this business is 46. Best in class businesses have an 85 or, 85 or higher. Why do I say that? Let's think about what does due diligence do? right? Due diligence is meant to identify best-in-class businesses, right? So if we flip that on its head and we design a business that is going to meet those best-in-class standards, right, that's going to pass the test, what have we created? We have created a business where, where someone from the outside looking in would have a high degree of confidence that this business can create predictable profits and cash flow, can create predictable, sustainable growth. That's what they're buying and therefore has predictable, transferable value. Now, I'd love to talk to you for the rest of the day about strategic capacity. Um, let's just, let's just, strategic capacity met, compares your client to the principles of best in class companies. It has two Elements, growth capacity, and value capacity. Now, this business could be worth $12 million. It's not. They have a growth capacity of 46. Guys, that's a failing grade. And a value capacity of 41. And when your client says, why is that? You know, we can go and look. Let's just focus on growth capacity. Well, you know, you're not, you're not top of the charts in any of these here. Yeah, here you are. You have one. Let's look at the report. It actually calls these out. Now, if your client has said, let's go back up here. The client has said, my number one priority is to stabilize cash flow, predictable profits and cash flow, dimension one client. Great. Okay. Well, then let's focus on, you see how we're doing it? We don't have to worry about 16 of these growth driving objectives. We're going to focus on these eight. And, and we have some best practices. They have a scalable sales process. And we have growth killers and deal killers. Now, this client does not may not care as much about these. One day they will, and that's a subject for another day. All right. Now, you've had this conversation with the client. And I'm moving pretty quickly through this. How does that impact the value of your business? All right. In short, and, and guys, send me an email. Be happy to, to uh, share this document with you. It's available in the community, and you'll have an opportunity to sign up for free in a couple of secs explaining strategic capacity, growth capacity, value capacity, and, and, and their relationship to the value of the business. Now, this business could be worth, this CEO has built $12 million worth of value. Range of multiples. This business at the high end of the range of multiples is worth 12 million. And at the low end of the range of multiples is worth six. And they have low growth capacity and low value capacity. They're, so they're sort of down in this corner. 
First of all, M&A is not available to this business. Value capacity of 41, you better have a different plan. Call, your, call an exit planner, right? This business is worth rough numbers, $6 million. Why is that? Well, you go back to the survey and you can go and you can figure it out. And we provide training on that. So don't worry about it. This is your value capacity. And these are your talking points as you're discussing this with the client. Now, how much does the business need to be worth? Is $12 million going to get you there? And, you know, CEOs don't want to talk about exiting their business, right? But they should, they should remember that they are the shareholder. And they will care one day about the equity value of the business. And the name of the day game is equity value planning. Well, what you can't have a plan without a goal. What's our goal? Our goal is to replace, in this case, half a million dollars a year of income. Um, we get to, we ask some additional questions to put some context around what the, the you know the gap between the current assets, the net proceeds required. Now, this CEO owns fifty percent of the business. Now, when they look at a business that's running along, this business is running along at 15 million. They may think they have plenty, right? Well, let's figure out if it is. They own 50% of the business. They have some debt. Now, we have to gross the number up. Okay, whatever they need to get needs to be grossed up to account for fees and taxes. Those of you who do tax planning, what a terrific opportunity to start showing off the impact of minimizing the tax consequence of a transaction and helping them understand that maybe they'll get a lower value, but they'll actually get a higher net because of tax consequences, et cetera. Through an 8% for professional fees, 25% for attack, for taxes. And, and here we go. So we know the value. Remember these from our range of values chart? I click calculate. Now I, we've put them at the bottom end of the range of multiples. You guys know the rolling five years, right? So I put five years in here. Yeah, yeah, five years, five years. I'm going to do it in five years. Every, every, every time you sit down with them, it's five years. Profit margin of 13%. Now they would have to grow when we click calculate. This business would have to grow at 41%. Wow. Okay, well that, every year for five years, they have to go from 15 million to 83 and a half million dollars. Well, that, I'm breathing in a brown bag. I'm probably... They passed out on the floor. What do we need to do? Well, the first thing CEOs do, by the way, when they go through this is they say, well, I don't really need half a million dollars. Well, not so fast. What happens if we, what happens if we get you to a five multiple and can we add, can we add two points to your profit margin? Let's hit calculate, see what we do here. Now we have to grow at 23%. Mm, how do you like me now? How about if we do a little tax planning and uh, let's get your taxes down to 15%. All right. I'm going to click calculate again somewhere here. Calculate. Now I have to grow the business at 20%. Now that's robust growth, but you see how we're, we're zeroing in. I haven't touched your half a million. And, uh, and by the way, I, I have a hunch that if we get, um, if we do a top end of the range of multiples, never mind strategic, you know, we're going to get to, now I have to grow 16%. Hard, but doable. Okay. So that's the equity value planner. What are we planning on delivering? This is your initial client interview. You're winning the engagement. You're starting some early analysis. Then what? Hey, George, I did the initial analysis. Now what? My client wants me to create a plan to get there. Great. That's where clarity level two comes in. Click on it. You guys, you see how easy it is to use, by the way? I, I'll bet, I will bet that you could use this with, with zero training. That's not what we're going to do to you, but it's that easy to use. I mean, if you can read and click the forward button, away you go. Level two is divided into the three dimensions as well. Okay. So, you know what, what, uh, I don't know if Chad, uh, I, I don't know, Chad, if, are you, if you're on this call, send me a chat. One of, uh, one of your colleagues just used uh, this with it, with you, level two with a client and they only scored three. Okay. So they had, they had their, their growth killers. The client said, listen, I want to learn more about those, those three right there. And so that's what they did. They, they did a project. You know, he got well compensated. The client's happy. And they just analyzed three of these. Now, here I've analyzed the whole shebang. Right? We've run the whole nine yards. I want to point out a couple of things. This is a tool that is designed, one, to analyze the client at the beginning of the engagement so that we can create a strategic plan that 
that incorporates their strengths and weaknesses. And that says, okay, well, we're going to help you. We're going to start by helping you, for example, create an effective senior leadership team because you, you need to move from all you to who, not how, right? Great book, by the way. Effective senior leadership. Here are, here are our eight growth driving objectives in dimension one. Same for dimension two, same for dimension three. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to dimension one here. And I want you to notice that here we have updated. This was updated on the third. I messed with it today. This was originally done, and this is in your dashboard, on the 18th of July. Now, you can tell at a glance when you've worked on certain areas, when you've updated information on these areas. It's very important because you need to know how current each of these is, right? Level two, we have growth driving objectives and, and the system is built on OKRs, objectives and key results. So if we have a growth driving objective here, effective senior leadership, then we have key results that need to be in place to tell us that we have an effective senior leadership team. And frankly, that, the, that this business is not the owner, that this business is a business, that the owner doesn't have a job, that the owner has an asset, okay? The CEO, any person who's operating as a C, right, is in a strategic position. I go down that rabbit hole. To take, the, take the launch course if you want to go down that rabbit hole, okay? So we want to have a, this CEO needs to separate the president and the CEO and their title and start behaving like they have to, and they have to start behaving like they're the, they're the shareholder, right? If you're the top shareholder, what do you need to do for this business? And if we're doing strategic planning, what do public companies do? Public companies, the shareholders, have expectations of the business. It is the same in the private in private businesses, right? So let's let's just walk through this one, and uh, and then we'll I'll, I'll show you the the report. What are the key results that need to be in place for us to say that this business has an effective senior leadership team? Walk through them with me, okay? Shareholders have written a time-bound goal for the business, which are shared with the senior leadership team. Now, that goal could be a revenue number, right? That goal could be a business value number. That goal can be a bunch of things, right? But it has to be written, and then we have to have transparency. Is there anything more transparent than a public company? And if they can thrive, why doesn't that hold true for private businesses? It does. But I won't go down that rabbit hole either. So true, and we can document more true than not. Now, imagine you're discussing it with the client. And if they say, well, it's true, and you can document, it's like, oh, you know, whatever. There are a bunch of questions that are raised there. Does the senior leadership team understand and are they aligned with the shareholders' goals? True. And we can document. We can document. We can document. Get in the picture. The senior leadership team is accountable to the business's vision, mission, and strategy. Now, those imply, those are covered in the second dimension, but we're, we're going to start building strength, right? This is a marathon. We're going to start building strength here. And these are gears in the business engine. Let me digress for a sec. Um, CEOs look at their P&L, and they think that that is their scorecard, right? That's their, no, P&L is the exhaust, right? That's not the speedometer. That's the exhaust. That's what's coming out the back. So how do we measure the horsepower? The, 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 the horsepower, that is strategic capacity. And what are the gears in the business engine? The gears in the business engine are the three dimensions of business growth and, they're, it, and it's objectives and key results, right? Those are the gears and they're interconnected. Senior leadership is accountable to, this one is directly connected to, meshes with the strategic uh, planning section of dimension two. All right, so I'm covering a lot of concepts, guys, but this is... This is important for you to understand. They're accountable to the shareholders' goals. They're accountable to the vision and mission, to the shareholders' goals. The senior leadership team meets regularly to review and discuss progress towards the shareholders' goals. Senior leadership meets weekly and keeps reports. Now, we have a report that we put in your hands. It's called Business Flow. Okay, Business Flow tracks. It's actually a starting point, right? Because every business is a little different, but it's a great starting point for tracking numbers. And it becomes 
the, the central document for our weekly meetings. The weekly meetings, we have scripts um, for them in the execution leadership system. So when I talk about a unified system, you're going to start getting the sense that you can, and by the way, it, you can pick whatever you need. You don't have to take it all. Now, the execution leadership system, you really benefit from taking the fearless business advisor course. You, you hanging with me? All right. The business runs smoothly in the CEO's absence. The B CEO can take a prolonged absence without disrupting positive business performance, right? Without this, huh? Every five minutes. I have a funny story to tell about that, but anyhow. And the business has a succession plan for each senior leader. True, and we can we have a document that is up to date. Well, for most businesses, what's the answer? I ask you to ask yourselves. We score that. And this business is a 57. By the way, these scores change real time, 63, all right? Now, here's a, another concept we're going to hit on, and then I'm going to move to the analysis dashboard. The potential value, so if, if the company has value, that value would be discounted by company-specific risk. No risk, no discount. High risk, severe discount, right? So... This is where value capacity comes in. The ROI, we display the total potential, $376,000 here, because that company-specific risk can be divided. I mean, the, the, uh, the, the discount can be divided and allocated amongst the, uh, the different growth-driving objectives, and that's how we arrive at potential and trapped, okay? Trapped value, 140. But I'm here to tell you, your ROI is three the ROI you're delivering is not this 140, it is $376,000 because there is no market for this business. They cannot, this is, this is, it, there's no reality, there's no currency to this 376. So you're not only capturing this last piece that needs to be trapped, that's trapped and needs to be, you know, put up on the, on the, on the money line, but you're also making that money line, money line possible as you increase value capacity. All right. Cool. A lot of concepts, but, you know, imagine you sit down with a CEO. I'm going to click on the analysis dashboard. And, um, and this, this business has six potential value of 6 million trapped value of 2.6 million. Okay. And we start breaking it down. Now, now your relevance, you, the ROI for working with you, is here in dollars and cents, okay? We have strategic capacity and it's two elements, growth capacity and value capacity. And imagine putting this, putting a plan in action. Okay, well, how, what are we gonna do? Well, you know, here are your scores. You're, you're, here, here is how you're performing here against best in class. You need to be getting, frankly, guys, you need to get to a 70 to, to get this bus. You need to get this, this race car. Maybe you've built the pace car. Um, and you get to an 85 and you have a formula car. All right. So all of this across the three dimensions of business growth. And, um, and as we increase growth capacity and value capacity, the value of the business increases. So an incredibly powerful way of making profit dimensions one and two and value add dimension three actionable. How do we take control of this beast? And in a way that is, that is, um, that is, you know, has a proven track record of success and is easily intelligible, right? And that is what clarity does. Okay. That is what clarity does. So it's, it, we, it'll help you everywhere from generating leads through long-term engagements and you decide how deep you want to go. You know, in the certification course, we talk about whether you're a one or a five. A one is a lead generator. Um, could be a, a wealth advisor who's like, hey, I just have CEOs and I want to plug them in. I want to help them make this asset. I want to introduce them to the people. You're a one. You're a five. You have a desk in the client's business. You're Maybe you're a fractional, uh, in the fractional CEO in the client's business. So most of our community operates at the three and four level, you know, architect, general contractor. And it's, uh, and it's good work, guys. We can help you no matter what the, your goals are for your engagements. Very dynamic system. All right. So what do we do about this? How do we help the clients win? 
right? That's what this is about, helping clients when the client gets a 20 or 30x return on working with you. So how do we get them there? I want you to do something right now, please. Pick up your phone, okay? And open the camera. Are you with me? Everybody pick up your phone, open your camera. I'm not going to tell you to take a selfie. And please take a picture of this QR code. This QR code will take you to a little menu. And on that menu, you have three options. One, you can get on the list for the free, no credit card, no obligation, guys. Um, if you read our vision and mission, you'll understand why I do this. I want you to help middle market companies get better. If you don't do business with us, that's fine. That doesn't mean I'm not going to help you. So get on the list for lead generator. Or then if you've done that, use the back button and you can set up a meeting with me. You have questions, you're intrigued, you're interested, you want to tell me that I'm completely full of it? Call me, set up a meeting. And the third, go check out the community, guys. We have uh, about 100 of your colleagues. See, we attract senior professionals, right? Like you. I, I looked at the names. These are, they're, this is you. And they are, they are trading ideas, talking, chatting, supporting each other. This is peer-to-peer -peer support, guys. That is also free, all right? Now, there are, we have plenty of high-value subscription packages. I want to help you no matter what, all right? So please take a picture of this QR code and sign yourself up for whatever is relevant to your world, okay? Now... I'm not internationally known, but I'm known to rock the microphone. I'm going to open this up uh, to QA. I hope, uh, guys, I, that was fun for me. I'm so thrilled to uh, to be showing this to you. And uh, so let's let's do this. Um, all right. What I'd like to do is, if you participants, I, I'm just so if you throw your your questions in chat, guys, um, I will. I will answer them or, or I'll promote you to, uh, I'll allow you, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to allow you all to talk. Those of you who stick around, I know we're, we're uh, right, right over the half hour mark. Right, right over the half hour mark. Oh, we got a, we have a, uh, there's Ernesto. Ernesto, great to, uh, great to see you, Jessica. I'm glad you're able to stick around. Joe, good to have you. John, excellent. I'm, I'm thrilled that you're here. John Best. Uh, John Best, my old friend, Carrie, Mark, good to see you. Mark and I met the other day, Mr. Medina. And there we go. Okay, guys, we're, I'm going down this. It's a long list. Ron, great to see you. Steve, okay. If you have questions, unmute yourself and uh, I will endeavor to answer them. So I'm, I'm here as long as you guys need me. So fire away if you have questions. Hey, George. Yes, sir. Ron, how are you? I'm doing good, George. A good presentation, as always. Thank you. Um, yeah, I've uh, played around with, with clarity, as, as you probably know. I haven't, I haven't actually taken a client all the way through it. And I'm wondering, in, in real life, when you, when you sit down with a client face-to-face uh, -face or by Zoom or whatever, and you, get, so you answer all the questions and you come to a stopping point, I was concerned that I didn't want to press the button that gave us both the results because I wanted to review the results before I sat down with the client again. Is there, mm -hmm. is there a, a way to kind of manage that process so it, it doesn't look like you're hiding something from the client at the, after, after he's done all the questions with you? Absolutely, so that, that's, a, that's a great question, Ron. So um, obviously in Lead Generator, this, the uh, system sends out a report. The report is really like, here's your strategic capacity and here's how you answered the questions, okay? Very straightforward. We want them to look in the mirror and be staring at that going, wow, not really, not really, hmm. But if you're using the initial client interview, you control uh, who sees what when. Okay. So okay. nothing nothing is emailed to your client. And um, because you know, to your point, you want to have a chance to chew on it, to think about it before uh, you discuss it with your client. So I can, I can also change the multiples uh, before he gets the report. You right? absolutely. And that you, so Ron, for those of you who don't know, Ron, this is Ron Everett, uh, a, a master evaluator. And you're absolutely right. We have a range of multiple, normalized range of multiples, but if you have multiples you want to use, you can input them into Clarity 
in the business okay. section, and and that's what the report will display. Okay, excellent, George. Thank you. Sure, you're welcome. Other questions? So, George, um, this is Jeff Stern. I'm Jeff, sure how are you? See man. my picture or not? I only see you. Um, can you talk about the process you meant to for the uh, database and the algorithms underlining how you do your calculations? Sure. I had a, I had a, you know, when we used to play with the other toy, uh, I, I always used to get questions about the underlying algorithms and what was the basis and where was it coming from? So can you talk a little bit about that with, with the growth drive numbers? Yeah. So, so I, I, I can't speak to that because I, you know, I frankly don't know, but um, the way we do this is very simple. Um, we, you, you, it's readily available to all of you out there. Private equity, closed transactions. Now, private equity pays a premium. Private equity doesn't, doesn't just buy every company that comes along, right? They buy best-in-class operations. What a great place to start. So we take private equity transactions, closed, paid out private equity transactions, and we normalize um, those, uh, those multiples by stripping out the premium that PE pays for size and the premium they pay for quality, okay? And so we, then we arrive at a normalized trading range, a low and a high, that are more appropriate for your typical middle market and pre-middle market business. And, and then after that, we look at their strategic capacity and we say, well, you know, that's why we divide, had to divide strategic capacity into growth capacity and value capacity, because the, the, they're, they're two different animals. They're two different ways of looking at the world. And, uh, and we, we, we look at the, the business say, well, you know, if, if you don't have these things, I mean, if you sit down with an M&A bank, you know, an investment banker, they're going to tell you, well, if I don't have this, 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 and this, they don't have any value because I can't sell them. They don't have value to me. You can go and do something else, do an ESOP, do, you know, do, go do something else, give it to your kids, but so, Jeff, that's in in a nutshell how it works. And I get into normalized EBITDA, but we really, you know, you want accuracy. We need to have normalized EBITDA. And we know that most pre-middle market, middle market businesses probably need to do some homework, which is why business flow becomes so impactful. It's a reporting. It's a very simple reporting tool, guys. And now we're starting to we're starting to zero in on, you know, how do we get our, our client to understand if m a is where they're headed that they're going to need to stop running their boat their beach house their golf club you know all of those ad backs need to you know that needs to be done well in advance of a transaction jeff i hope that answered your question that's a good start thank you george <laughs> you're welcome other questions guys going once going twice Okay, very cool. Wait a second. I see a few in chat here. Um, okay, got a drop. Good to see you. Okay, Jessica, goodbye. Okay. Um, your reaction to Clarity 1 and 2 for this value. Spend 1% of your enterprise value. Yeah, th thank you, Bill. Thank you, Bill. What do we pay? What do we pay our, what do you pay your UBS? What do you, Raymond James, your Morgan Stanley, or whoever you're doing, your, your John Hancock, whoever you're doing business with. What do you pay them? Let's call it 1%, right? You pay them 1% to manage your asset. And frankly, we maybe we'll have a debate as to whether we're overpaying or not. But we pay 1% without batting an eye. Should, should we not be able to make a bona fide argument that, that we can charge a 1% on, on the value of the business? Now, I would, that's a great argument, Bill. And I could, you know, we could talk about this for the next um, several hours, you know, 1% of what, at what point, how do you make sure you get paid? You know, those are all things that we actually discuss in the community. Uh, um, we discussed this, a lot of this topic on the last Coffee Clash. Coffee Clash, a weekly, free, anyone can join, conversation. There's no agenda. We get together on Tuesdays at 9.30, we drink coffee, and we talk about issues like that. Okay, so ch go check out on YouTube and subscribe um, the video from last week. Uh, pro tip, watch it at double speed and slow it down when you get to the parts that uh, are the most scintillating. All right, other questions? Okay, if there aren't any more questions, guys, you know, what I'm going to urge you to do is if you haven't yet, you know, do a screen grab, 
go to this, uh, click, you know, take a picture of this, go to this uh, and, and sign up. You have nothing to lose, right? Worse, we have a conversation and we get to know each other a bit. At best, maybe we can help you, um, you can, we can help you build a thriving advisory business. That is what, you know, that's what gets me out of bed in the morning. And I, the, the whole beginning of the book is about why that's true. But, um, w- w- you know, business owners need help and you are the ones who can help them understand where they need help and what to do about it. Okay. So with that, I'm going to say thank you very much. Uh, you will get an email with a link to this, uh, to this recording. And uh, any questions? Always glad to help. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. And I hope to talk to you very soon.